Now, over the next 87 days, the parties will be seeking to maximise their appeal to voters in 650 constituencies across the United Kingdom. But there are already signs that this could be one of the most exhausting campaigns in British political history. And with public affection for politicians at an all-time low, candidates could find themselves falling victim, in the words of Hunter S. Thompson, to fear and loathing on the campaign trail. Our political correspondent, Michael Crick, will be touring key constituencies, Thompson style, in a 50s pink convertible. And he starts tonight in Scotland. We had six ordnance survey maps, four street atlases, the good food guide, the Ashcroft poles, a microphone, Kendall Mint Cake, the Politico's Guide to the General Election, and a packet of hand warmers. Not that we needed all that for the trip, but once you get locked into a general election, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. The first leg of our trip took me to Paisley and South Renfrewshire, just west of Glasgow. Here, Douglas Alexander, already Shadow Foreign Secretary and Labour's National Election Chief, now faces a fight even to remain an MP. The Ashcroft poll last week had him 8% behind the SNP. Douglas Alexander seems to have quite a fight on this time at this election against the SNP. Yeah, he certainly has. I'm a Paisley South. Um, obviously with the yes and no, it was very close and possibility, yeah, you could lose. He's well respected, man, Douglas Alexander. But the poll, the latest poll suggests he's 8% eight points, eight behind the SNP. They're always 8% behind, you know, but Douglas will do fine. The challenge to Alexander comes from the SNP's Mari Black, still a student at Glasgow University. That's the thing. Just 20, she could become Britain's youngest MP in about 200 years, and this was her first ever TV interview. Of course I am young and I wouldn't claim for a second to have the knowledge or experience of a 40 year old, but that was one of the fantastic things about this referendum, is it's re-engaged young people. It's taken somebody like me, who's made daft mistakes as a youngster and has shown me and opened my eyes to, there's more important things in the world, there's real issues. The Commons is there to represent everybody and part of the population are youngsters. So who came up with the rule that you have to be a middle-aged middle-class male to be in the House of Commons, you know? Last night, as the Paisley Pirates ice hockey team met Dundee, local fans had mixed views on whether 20 was too young for Parliament. Did that worry you, having an MP who's only 20? Probably, because I've not really got any much background. I've not got a lot of background, so they need somebody older. So vitality and ability counts as much as age. I've seen a few 60-year-old duffers represent this in the past. She's only 20. Really? Would that make any difference to how you might vote? No. You wouldn't mind having a 20-year-old MP? No. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Okay, thank let's go, you. Boy. Right, I'll let you get on. But there's been huge controversy since Mari Black was picked last week over her speech at a rally last October saying she nearly headbutted a Labour councillor on the night of the referendum result. We had to walk past all these fat cat Labour councillors goading us, clapping sarcastically, saying, oh, better luck next time, or oh, hard lines. Took everything, every fibre of my being, not to put the nut in one of them. Now, the actual phrase, as I say, it's not one I would use again. Well, I mean, violence. it suggests violence, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, uh -huh. it, it suggests you condoning the idea of violence. Yes, well, as I say, it's a West of Scotland tongue-in-cheek phrase. Well, it hasn't been taken as tongue-in-cheek by people in the, not everybody in the West mm -hmm. of Scotland. No, I understand that, and all I can do is explain it, and I, I can only be genuine in my explanation of that. But the important thing to remember is the point I was making, the sentiment behind it, and the sentiment was that a lot of people in Scotland are unhappy with the state of affairs. She's also been attacked for her tweets, including including one 16 months ago in which she said, I really effing hate Celtic, the football club. And, and, and to have someone encouraging and exhorting possible violence against uh, opponents, to talk in sectarian terms when we know the problem that we have in the west of Scotland with the two major uh, football teams, it's just strange. And, and maybe, you know, in a few years' time, 
uh, once she's got her head sorted out, uh, she might be a worthy candidate for, for high office. But at the moment, I think it would do the people in, in this area a real disservice to have someone so immature uh, as a possible uh, MP. Labour's problem is the SNP threat here could prove a huge unwelcome distraction for the man running their national campaign. Well, Labour's problem here in Paisley reflects their wider problems in Scotland as a whole. The Ashcroft polls last week were quite a shock. In Glasgow, for instance, the seven seats all held by Labour at the moment, in six of them, the SNP on Ashcroft's polls are currently ahead. Now, traditionally, Labour has relied on a contingent of about 50 MPs from north of the border. That's now severely in doubt. And without such a cohort of MPs, it makes it a lot more difficult for Ed Miliband to achieve a majority at Westminster. Makes it a lot more likely that if Ed Miliband is to become Prime Minister, he will depend in some way or other on SNP and members of Parliament. Tomorrow, our road trip moves on to a very different area, rural Lincolnshire, where there's also a very, very young insurgent candidate hoping to become an MP, in this case, for UKIP.